Hey everybody, cool junk to talk about today. Today, we're going to talk about probably one of the most, I uh, say probably, uh, nah, I'm going to say Lincoln is clearly the most famous uh, and, and well-liked Republican. I would venture to guess that Ronald Reagan is in second place, right? So Ronald Reagan is the president. This is Ronald Reagan right here. His uh and then his vice presidential candidate, who was his vice president for all eight years, he's going to be a two-term president. Uh, this is George H.W. Bush, all right? So Ronald Reagan is the president from 19, 1980 to 1988. That's when the elections happened. Ronald Reagan is the president from 1980 to 1988. That's what we're going to talk about today. From 1988 to 1992, this is the president, George H.W. Bush, all right? His son... George W. Bush, all right? The only difference is he, this, this guy goes by George H.W. Bush. Uh, that George W. Bush is just, there's no H there. It's just George Walker B Bush. Uh, he will be president from 2000 to 2008. So, uh, and, and, and we'll talk about these guys all this unit. Ronald Reagan is the one that, that we're going to talk about all day today. Uh, very unique uh, situation with uh, Ronald Reagan is, there's not a lot of presidents that are as liked as Ronald Reagan was when he is alive. He's going to run against uh, Jimmy Carter in 1976, and he's or, uh, Jimmy Carter in 1980, and he's going to beat Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter is not going to win re-election. Ronald Reagan uh, was already well known. Uh, I mean, he wasn't. He was already well known. He was an actor. All right, uh, so he did a lot of Hollywood movies. Now he wasn't your A-list actor, your big name guys. Uh, he did a lot of like B movies, like movies that weren't super popular. He did a lot of westerns. All right, so he did a bunch of westerns when he was younger, uh, cowboys and Indians type things. Then he ends up becoming the uh, uh, Screen Master Guild. Oh man, I shouldn't know what the name. Basically, like the union for all the. Um, uh, actors and, and, and writers and stuff. He becomes the president of that. Then he will be the governor of California. Uh, when you're a Republican and you're the governor of California, you, you're pretty likable uh, because typically Republicans don't do real well in California, uh, but he is liked. And when he runs for president in 1980, he, he wins pretty convincingly. He is nicknamed the great communicator. He has a great personality. Like he's uh, he jokes around and all this other stuff. One of the downsides that people point out to him is that he was he was old. He was already relatively old when he won in, in 1980. Um, and so when he comes into office, he is a liked figure. Nobody really has anything negative to say about Ronald Reagan. So Ronald Reagan comes in in 1980. All right. Uh, he he. When he comes in, he does a few things. Let me get get myself out of the way here. Ah, I'm too large there. Uh, he has three policy he three policies he wants to get done. Slash taxes. Right. We're gonna cut taxes. We're gonna cut unnecessary programs. Then we're gonna spend a whole bunch of money increasing the size of the defensive military. Now. For those of you keeping track at home, you're like, wait, what? So he's going to cut taxes, so he's going to have less money, but then increase spending on the military. How is he going to do that? So Ronald Reagan, one of the reasons everybody likes him, and we're going to talk about a, a very unique event that happens early on in his presidency that's going to add to that, is during Ronald Reagan's time as presidency, everybody got to have their cake and eat it too. Taxes were like non-existent, but they still spent a ton of money. It just added to the deficit, all right? Spent a bunch of money that we didn't have. Now, I'm not going to throw, uh, uh, throw Ronald Reagan economically under the bus. This is, is necessary. We were coming out of a recession in the 1970s. You've got to spend money. When FDR did it in the 1930s, they understood that you had to spend money you didn't have to get the economy going again. That's what Ronald Reagan is, is going to do. He's going to spend money, cut taxes, everything is great. The only the real odd thing with Ronald Reagan is nobody looks at the stuff that FDR was doing in the 1930s, present day, and be like, we should go back to that. But people do look at Ronald Reagan's time in office and be like, look how Reagan did it. We should keep doing it like that. Ronald Reagan and FDR, all right, neither one of their policies is long-term successful. That was a short-term thing. But because everybody got their cake and eat it too under Ronald Reagan, 
that he, he is viewed very favorably. There is also, and before I start telling the stories about Ronald Reagan, you have to understand he has a mandate, overwhelming public support of the American people. He's the last president really ever to have that, where it's just everybody's like, yeah, we like him. Like, he, he's good. There's a, a, a specific reason why that is. Do you know what can take a president from being not liked to being really popular? If he gets shot. That happened to Ronald Reagan. Now, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy story if, if you go and look it up. Uh, so there's this guy that was completely obsessed with, uh, with an actress. All right. And so he's just a random dude obsessed with an actress in, in Hollywood. Y'all don't know her because whatever. Uh, so completely obsessed with an actress in Hollywood. And he like, starts stalking her and stuff. And she like puts a restraining order on him. It's just a whole weird thing. So he says, man, if she can just know who I am, she will fall in love with me. Well, what better way of getting famous than shooting the president? Literally, that's that's why Ronald Reagan's getting ready to get shot. Ronald Reagan, he's early on in his presidency. He's walking he's walking out of a building, and, and they have video footage of it. I don't have it. It's I would show it to you if I have it, because it doesn't really show anything, but it's it's crazy. Uh, so, because uh, it's not like the JFK assassination. I mean, it doesn't. Uh, so, it, Ronald Reagan's walking out, and it's in a big crowd of people. He's surrounded by Secret Service, and this dude comes up and just shoots him in the chest. Like, shoots him in the chest. And then, like, his Secret Service jump on top of Ronald Reagan defending him. And the guy, like, firing into the uh, pile of Secret Service, kills one Secret Service agent, uh, permanently paralyzes another one. Then they end up uh, uh, attacking a guy and beating the crap out of him. Very unique story on his uh, criminal trial. And if you want to go look it up, if, that, if you're not interested, then okay. But here's a random thing. Uh, he is free now. He's, he's just a free man in America now. The guy that shot Ronald Reagan. Just in society now. You can go Google it if you're interested. All right. So, Ronald Reagan gets shot. Everybody's horrified by this. Like, oh my gosh, they take him to the hospital. You know, he doesn't have time to get his own doctors or surgeons or anything like that. I guess they would have their own. Goes to the emergency room. He's got a gunshot wound to the chest. He's still breathing. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? So, they wheel him in. I imagine, like, imagine you have, like, a doctor's appointment or you have a surgery scheduled at a hospital. All of a sudden, they bring the president in with a gunshot wound. You ain't having surgery that day. Uh, so, the whole hospital like, shuts down, I imagine. Uh, they, they wheel him in. Everybody's freaking out. The media's like, because this happened on, like, a street in, like, a busy street, at, like, New York City. I don't think it was in Washington, D.C. I don't think it was in Washington, D.C. when it happened. It's on video. All the, everybody's freaking out. The whole world knows about it. Uh, and th they go in, and they're going to put him, put, put the gas mask on him, to put him under to go in and, and, and remove the bullet uh, from his chest that has uh, very luckily missed all vital stuff. This dude, as they go to put the mask on him to knock him out, he grabs the doctor's hands, all right? And, like, everybody thought he was, like, unconscious. And, and the whole, like, surgery room uh, uh, stops up. He says, wait a minute. Before y'all do this, y'all all Republicans, right? Like, dude's making jokes. Uh, he's making jokes here as he uh, is getting ready to uh, go under to have life-saving uh, surgery to have this bullet removed from his chest. He ends up coming out and making a full recovery from this. Uh, interesting enough that when he's under, uh, at a certain point in his presidency, for a surgery that George H.W. Bush... Of his vice president has to be sworn in as the president for like two days while uh, Ronald Reagan is having surgery. So it's kind of a, a unique thing that, that happens at the time. But everything goes well. When Ronald Reagan recovers and makes a full recovery from this, this dude just took a bullet to the chest for America. All right. How popular, how popular do you think Ronald Reagan is? Astronomical. So on top of that, he's already a likable guy. Dude got shot. It when when a president gets shot, it humanizes him, makes him seem like a real person, not just a random politician. Uh, from from this point on, he's going to be incredibly popular on the way he does things. Uh, so as we start talking about the popularity of Ronald Reagan in the 1980s, you have to understand that, that there's a people had their cake and eat it too. He had been shot. There's all these things. Uh, that he doesn't have any skeletons in the closet. He's a nice, like he is a fun, funny, enjoyable person to be around. Uh, so all those things really combine or why he becomes very popular. And 
where's my right, here we go his inaugural hymns become the president. Of president of the united states ronald reagan was not everyone's hero but he certainly dominated the headlines that shaped the year he promised a tougher line abroad but at home his chief target was the economy he lowered taxes and slashed government spending that was his recipe for boosting production and cutting in play. All right, so at the very end there, uh, there's a picture of Ronald Reagan. You, you saw the um, uh, the jelly beans, uh, that little glass jar. It's still the jelly beans. It's a staple. I don't know, because I didn't live through there. I mean, I was born in 1983, so I don't remember any of this. All, all, all my knowledge of this is through history, just, just like you guys. So I'm not real sure if that was just something he did that the media keyed on or if he did it as a symbol, but he loved jelly beans and he always had a jar of jelly beans on his desk. Like that was just a thing that he had. Just a, just a thing. All right. Uh, so this is Ronald Reagan. So Ronald Reagan need to clarify is not the smartest president we've ever had. He's probably in the bottom 25% of smartest presidents we've had. That is not a dig. He is an extremely intelligent person. He's much smarter than me, much smarter than most people, as all presidents are. Usually, when you based on presidential intelligence, the really, really intelligent presidents struggle. The ones that acknowledge they're not the smartest people around actually usually thrive because they surround themselves with very, very smart people. So Ronald Reagan comes up with an economic theory all right, so he's clearly not coming up with this theory. He's got smart people who uh, tell him this is a good way of doing things, and he does it. And it's called trickle-down economics, all right? So when you cut taxes, he doesn't cut it for the poor people, all right, or the middle class, even though I'm sure they saw some cuts. The biggest cuts came from the wealthy, that the wealthy pay less in taxes. He says wealthy people are going to take that money, that extra money. They're not just going to sit on it. They're going to use it to make more money. They're going to buy more businesses. They're going to do other stuff, which in turn creates more jobs. And it's called trickle-down economics, sometimes nicknamed Reaganomics, where you cut taxes for the rich and all that money trickles down to everybody else. Now, this is really in the 1980s is when you get Democrats and Republicans completely different views on the economy. Republicans from this point on up to present day think uh, the best thing to do is cut taxes for the rich and let rich people create jobs for the poor people. Uh, the Democrats today take the complete opposite stance and say, if you're trying to get poor people more money, cut taxes for the poor people, all right, and then tax the wealthier more. They, they have more money than, than they can possibly spend, and if you quadrupled their tax rate, their standard of living isn't going to change. But then the Republicans will say, yeah, but if they don't have extra money, they're not gonna create these jobs that employ the poorer people. So it's just which side uh, are you viewing it on, but those uh, two ideas that still exist today really come out during Ronald Reagan's time in office. So Reaganomics talks about uh, uh, cutting taxes for the wealthy people so they don't pay as much taxes so that they it'll trickle down and help out the poor people. All right, El Clico, there we go. They called it Reaganomics. of the budget. The president needed all the friends he could get. His tough line was creating victims. America's air traffic controllers went on strike in August for better pay and conditions. But the president had an answer. He replaced them with military controllers. Union leaders were led away in shackles and the union itself dismantled. It was the kind of crushing victory even the president's supporters had not expected. What hurt more people were the massive cuts in welfare programs. All right, so he, he is cutting back programs, but you know government programs in theory are designed to help people. So when you cut back government programs, somebody's going to be negatively impacted by it. But the other side of that is people are paying less taxes since those government those programs aren't being funded. So... Uh, the air traffic controllers, that is an early one where he gets tested and his response is crazy. Air traffic controllers wanted more money, right? And they're, so air traffic controllers, like at an airport, they decide which planes come and land in what order. They work for the federal government. That Just that way it's equal across the country. Wherever you fly to, everybody's trained the same. 
they wanted more money. All right. Now, keep in mind, it had been a recession, so a lot of people hadn't gotten paid. But the air traffic controllers are really important, and they demanded to get more money. And the federal government's like, no, I guess. And they're like, well, fine, we will go on strike. And all the air traffic controllers go on strike, and like all the airports shut down. They're expecting Ronald Reagan is going to be like, okay, let's talk this out. Ronald Reagan fires every single air traffic controller in America and then arrest the guys that had organized it, saying it hurts public safety by shutting down the airports, and then uses the military air traffic controllers to run the private airports until they can hire more air traffic controllers. This is... Uh, uh, now, if this happened present day, you're going to be split down the middle of it. But when Ronald Reagan does anything, it's a good thing because, again, everybody loves him. He's been shot by this point. Everybody loves him. Everything is great. So uh, it is a huge, huge victory for him when he does this. He's going to take a tough line, all right? Uh, uh, so he's not afraid to make the tough decisions, uh, and he's going to explain to you why he's going to uh, make those tough decisions. This, again, endears him to the public. They could have been against this idea, but it, when everybody likes him as a person, which happened for a multitude of reasons we've already talked about, when he makes these tough decisions, it actually usually makes him more popular. Most presidents, it wouldn't. Presidents that hadn't been shot in the chest and made a joke as they got surgery to survive. Uh, but with Ronald Reagan, it does. It just makes him more popular. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is crazy. This I, I, I got to make my, myself a little bigger on this one. This, this, is, this is so ridiculous that <laughs> Ronald Reagan's getting ready to win the Cold War. Get ready to win it. Doesn't even know it. Get ready to win it. And here's how. So Ronald Reagan. <sighs> Ronald Reagan has cabinet meetings, which is all his, all his advisors come together. And he get, he has a very good cabinet. And they'll sit there and, and give him updates on how the country is going. Dude will occasionally fall asleep. He's older. Falls asleep during cabinet meetings. All right. Uh -huh. So this has got to be really awkward. Uh, it's like everybody's there to meet with him, and then he falls asleep. Like, do you keep talking to him? Like, like what do we do? Everybody's like, like looking at each other. Like, what? Do we wake him up? So uh, the, this kind of gets leaked to the to the media that he's falling asleep in cabinet meetings. So uh, well, what he does is to keep himself awake during cabinet meetings, he doodles, makes little drawings. Now. He's actually a really good cartoonist. Like, uh, uh, so he's he's not just your average like middle school kid drawings. Uh, they're they're pretty they're pretty good. So he sits here and he just doodles doodles during cabinet meetings to keep himself awake. And then uh, uh, he'll take his doodles and he'll just hand them to people uh, as he's leaving. It's like good job today, Billy, and like signs it and gives it to him. Like his doodles are like really worth a lot of money now because they were doodled by Ronald Reagan. Uh, but he's like signed them sometimes and people's like, like, look, Billy, I don't always fall asleep during cabinet meetings. Sometimes I do this. Like he can, he even, uh, picks on himself. So he's doing one of these doodles one day. Uh, and he's in the middle of a cabinet meeting. Again, he's average, uh, slightly above average level intelligence probably. Uh, and he's like, I figured it out. <laughs> and they're like, what? And he like has a doodle. He's like, Call in all our scientists. I got an idea. And they're like, okay. So they call, call in all the scientists. And he's like, all right. Got an idea. What if, stay with me now, space nukes. And they're like, what now? What's this? He's like, space nukes. So what if we have satellites in space with new, I've, I've already, I just sketched it all up. This is what all makes sense. So we have like satellites in space and they have nukes on them and like little Scud missiles too. So if like Russia, if Russia launches a nuke at us, all right, we can launch a little Scud missile that hits their nuke and we can launch it from space because we're up in space. It launches down, it intersects theirs and boom, it blows up. Then automatically our satellite's going to launch a nuke and use like trajectories and triangulation and math junk to figure out where their nuke came from. Boom, blow it up. Automatic, automatic defense system. 
what you think? And the scientists are like, um, not looking at each other because they like Reagan. Yeah. yeah, so, sir, that's not, it's not possible. Um, and he's like, sure it is. And they're like, no, you can't. There's like physics and stuff. You can't like launch missiles from space from a satellite to blow the satellite out of orbit. Like whatever the reasons are, it's like not like the the angle and trajectory would be so fast anything would burn up. Like there, there's no way. He was like, no, no. Space nukes. We're gonna make them. And they're like, sir, we're not making space nukes. All right. And he was like, no, no, no. I already got a name for it. It's called the Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI. I got a name for it. Got to make it. Got a name for it. And they're like, sir, you can't make it. It's not, it's not possible. You, there's nothing you can do for us to go try to make this thing that we know is impossible. And he's like, I give you one trillion dollars. That's trillion with a T. Guess what they say? Okie dokie. Whoop, let's go try to make space nukes. So that they run out here and he gives them a trillion dollars. It's it's like physically impossible, like against physics. Like you just can't, you can't do it. It's, it's not a thing. But they're like, we're just going to move stuff around here and pretend like we're making it because a trillion dollars. <laughs> Why wouldn't we? So they're trying. There's no way it can be done. They're like, well, hey, at least we're getting paid. Like once we try our hardest and we go back and tell them like it'll just be a done deal, you know, it won't be a thing. Ronald Reagan goes on national TV and tells everybody we got space nukes. And the scientists are like, what? what are you doing? No, don't tell people that. Not only that, he has like a cartoon made up, like a bubble over America. And like the missiles are like popping as they hit. Like, oh, we have SDI, we have space nukes. And the uh, scientists are like, why would, why would he tell people this? So America, they're like, what? So America, we love some Ronald Reagan. But we also know Ronald Reagan. We're like... Is this dude, he, is he spending a trillion dollars on... Sp now, keep in mind, this is the 1980s. You know what the biggest movie at the time was in the 1980s? <laughs> Star Wars. You know what weapon they had, the, the dark, dark side had in Star Wars? They had the Death Star. America's like, are you... <laughs> Ronald Reagan, are you trying to make a Death Star? Are you... Are you... Are you trying to make a Death Star? And everybody thinks it's funny. We're spending a trillion dollars we don't have, but everybody's like thinks it's hilarious. So in America, we never call it SDI, the Strategic Defense Initiative. We just call it Star Wars. <laughs> like, yeah, Star Wars, that's our boy, Ronald Reagan. Uh, so if that was the story, I probably wouldn't make it into history alone because presidents have, have spent things that have been highly ineffective and, and wasted money on. So this is a <laughs> Russia. <laughs> so the leader of Russia is hanging out and finds out. He sees these announcements and says, America is making space nukes. He's like, oh my gosh. Call in all our scientists. So all the Russian scientists run into the leader of Russia. And he's like, hey, America's making space nukes. They have space nukes. We want space nukes too. And the scientists are like, um, sir, um, according to all our calculations, uh, th that's not possible. And they're like, no, America's building it. They're like, sir, they're not, they're not really building it. Like they're just telling us they are. They're like, America just spent a trillion dollars on it. A freaking trillion. You know how much money that is? They spent like every bit they have on something. There is no way anybody is dumb enough to spend a trillion dollars on something that doesn't work. They have clearly figured it out and we better as well. And Russia's like, oh my gosh, America must be smarter than us because we can't figure it out. We don't know how it's possible. Oh my gosh, America has won. Literally, they don't realize that the Star Wars program is impossible. They think we're really making it. The moment they think that we have access to space nukes, guess, guess who starts backing down real quick? It's Russia. Uh, and Ronald Reagan unintentionally, I guess, uh, is really a big reason for Russia. All of a sudden, they want to be real good friends with America because they become convinced we have space nukes, and they don't. So uh, Reagan's military, uh, he spends literally a trillion dollars. A trillion dollars on the military, creates the Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI. 
we, we call it Star Wars. We made fun of it. Russia, apparently not understanding our jokes. That, that we don't even believe it. But Russia, they take it very seriously. Uh, and the Soviet Union absolutely panics and thinks that they have been beaten in this arms race. And they're going to start backing down real quick when they think we can just like launch a nuke from them from space. And there's nothing they can do about it. Got a video clip here. Then in March of 1983, Reagan decides to raise the stakes with a new initiative that the Soviets could never have imagined. It is called SDI, the Strategic Defense Initiative, or as its detractors would call it, the Star Wars program. Overstating it a bit, it was like it was on the grocery shelf and all we had to do was have the will and the money and it was here. And of course, 24 years later, we still uh, don't have it and we will one of these days, but Many of the Russians said the only reason that Reagan could be developing STI is because he intends a first strike nuclear attack against the Soviet Union. Yeah, like we've, <laughs> this is like a sketch of like what's supposed to happen. Uh, yeah, I, that doesn't make any sense to me either. I don't like, you got like a, a spaceship up here and like a book bag floating around somebody's launching a tampon i don't know i don't know what's going on here all right so 1984 ronald reagan is going to run for re-election think he's going to win oh yeah uh absolutely dominating victory in 1984 i think he wins almost every single state uh in the united states extremely popular it's really the last time that there's just been overwhelming support for a president uh and Ronald Reagan is the beneficiary of it. So he wins uh, 1984. So there is some, uh, looking back on it, there is, you know, no presence without controversy. People like to look at Ronald Reagan in rose-colored eyes. Uh, the AIDS epidemic had come out, uh, which wipes out your immune system, and then the first time you get any type of sickness, uh, you'll die. Uh, it becomes a huge epidemic. Like, you didn't know where it's, where it's coming from, how it's being spread. Uh, they knew uh, it's a sexually transmitted disease on top of, of blood transfusions and, and stuff like that. Uh, so it was a huge epidemic in the 80s. Like people really felt AIDS was going to be the thing that's going to wipe out the Earth's population. Uh, Ronald Reagan doesn't really do anything with AIDS. And looking back on it, uh, it could have been, we could have really nullified a lot of the issues in America with AIDS had there been more federal guidance on it. But Ronald Reagan doesn't really understand it, and it's like a hands-off, like, nah, we're just not going to talk about it. So he gets uh, uh, blamed more for things that he just refused to acknowledge or talk about than for a lot of the stuff that he does do. But uh, there, there ends up being a big question now with sex education in school, because prior to this, it was just like, either they didn't have sex education, or it's like, if you have sex, you'll die. Then it's like, wait a minute, with AIDS, there's like literally a uh, a problem here. So they're going to start like mandating sex, sex education in schools, which ends up being a, a controversial thing because, you know, teaching people human nature is, is controversial. Uh, but uh, it, it becomes a kind of a hot button subject in the 1980s over should public schools be the one that are teaching like safe sex, like condoms and stuff like that. Or is that completely should be left to the parents? Well, what if people don't have parents that are teaching them these things? Like, how do we get this information out there to them? Uh, so AIDS comes into public view, and it's kind of a controversy. But Reagan just ignores it. At the time, it doesn't really hurt his time in office. As we get further away from it and we look back on, on this, it, it does kind of hurt his reputation a little bit that he just aggressively decided he wasn't going to talk about it, even though it was a... Uh, pandemic type situation uh, that was happening in America at the time. What we got here? Yeah. Four more years for incumbent American President Ronald Reagan. The American election dominated headlines all year. If there was a moment when it seemed the tide might turn, it was during the first of two debates between Mondale and Reagan. Mondale won. Reagan looked old and uncertain, but Republican organizers did not need to panic. In the end, the 1984 election was not about ideas, it was about images. And here, the Republicans won hands down. So, uh, 
1984, Ronald Reagan, again with Vice President George H.W. Bush. <laughs> All right. Any other president this situation happens, this happens in Ronald Reagan's second term in office. Any other presidents that this happens to, they would be absolutely sunk. But since it's Ronald Reagan, gets off Scott clean. So here's what happens. They'll have a... Ah, I'll just explain it to you. Uh, so there's a country in South America, all right, uh, called Nicaragua, all right? So, or in Central America, Nicaragua. They have a government we don't like, all right? Now, we would like for that government to not be their government. There's a group of guys, uh, a large group in that country that wants to aggressively overthrow their government and, like, make it a democracy. They're called Contras, like rebels, basically, in Central America that want to overthrow the government. They're called Contras. Now, America would love to give them money, but that's like super illegal and we're not allowed to do it, all right? So, what happens is America sells Iran in the Middle East. We sell them weapons. Even though we have issues with Iran, somehow this is still allowed. We sell Iran weapons, and I'm about to make up some numbers, and I guarantee the video I'm getting ready to show you is going to make me look dumb, but something like we sell them 20, or we sell them $30 million worth of weapons, all right? So, uh, we, let, let me back up, we're going to sell them $10 million of weapons, but we're going to charge them $30 million, all right? So they gave us 20 million too much. Well, technically, we don't like count that money. So we gave them the weapons, they gave us 30 million dollars, and we take the additional 20 million that we overcharged them and just hand it to the Contras down here and like, oh, nobody has any idea. Well, then the media finds out that this had happened. And the whole place blows up, all right? Uh, and they're like, wait, why do you can't do this? This is illegal, whatever. And they like put, uh, they call uh, Ronald Reagan on like news conference like Ronald Reagan did you give money did you take extra money from Iran and give it to a uh, uh, place in Nicaragua and he's like <laughs> so Ronald Reagan he's like, Nicaragua what, where is that I, I'm not even sure where that what, what's going on and, and Iran did we sell weapons to Iran I'm not so he plays up on this I don't really know what's going on thing and gets away with it. He clearly was in charge of this. Like Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North is a guy that gets thrown under the bus and then like gets out of it because he basically gets pardoned. Uh, <laughs> he basically says like like they told like Reagan told me to do it. And then Reagan when they ask him about there he's like Nicaragua. I don't know how to pronounce that one. I, wh what's going on? Where, wh wh where am I at right now? Like, he just plays up this, I'm a dumb grandpa, and I don't know what's going on. And everybody's like, yeah, there's no way. He, he's way too dumb to have figured that out. Oh, well, let's just ignore this whole thing. Uh, the Iran-Contra affair, looking back on it, it it's kind of scary how when a politician can get so popular that we just ignore blatant things. There's a lot of presidents. Uh, if, this, if you called them the way they caught Ronald Reagan doing this, would be impeached. Uh, but with Ronald Reagan, they're like, it's okay. So it kind of goes to show how, like, Teflon, how, like, things don't stick to Ronald Reagan with the Iran-Contra affair. But it, it, was, it, was a big, it was a big deal, but they didn't really know who to blame for it. By giving Iran what it wanted, military arms, the U.S. was hoping to get what it wanted, the return of American hostages in Beirut. Arms priced by the government at $12.5 million dollars were sold to Iran at a marked up price. The twelve and a half million was deposited in the government account, and the profits were deposited in a Swiss bank account controlled by Richard Secord. These funds were then diverted to the Contras in Central America. I don't think it was wrong. I think it was a neat idea. I did not know at that time that there was any money involved. I only knew that we had received our $12 million for the weapons which we had agreed to sell. Then, a little later, when the Attorney General told me that he had come upon something that indicated that there was something to do with money in Swiss bank accounts. And he said, oh, what? I don't, but, so what does Switzerland 
have to do with this? The Swiss, Swiss, I like Swiss cheese. Like, he, he just plays it off like, oh, you have to explain that to me again. Now, what's happening? What's going on? And he did enough. They're like, yeah, no way he, he can know anything. And he clearly, clearly did. The guy that said he thought it was a neat idea, that's Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. Uh, and he's like, I did everything. I, I was authorized to do everything that I did, uh, which clearly uh, goes against the original statements that uh, Reagan uh, was making. All right. So Reagan and Gorbachev, shocker, Ray, uh, Russia wants to be friends with America now because they think we have space nukes. So when they call up Reagan, he's like, yeah, let's meet. They meet together and they come up with this thing called the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, the INF. All right. We are, once again, going to start limiting the amount. So we've been able to like destroy each other 500 times over. How about we only destroy each other... 50 times over like so we are, are working our way that way down it's just the massive buildup and, and here's the problem with the massive buildup you don't just make a nuke and it just sits there all right and, and we're going to talk about this more in, in the next few days as we start talking about the collapse of the, of the soviet union uh you have to spend billions of dollars a year keeping those things from exploding all right uh they can't like everything has to be updated on them all the time. You can't just make a bomb and it just sits there like a hand grenade. All right. Not with nukes. So it, we're afraid if somebody has a huge economic crisis, it takes a, it takes a lot of money to dispose of nukes, to break them down. So we're like, Hey, while we're still strong, let's only get down to the nukes that we actually need because what we have is so ridiculous. It's, it's unnecessary and it's really dang expensive for both of us. So uh, the INF helps start eliminating even more nukes at the time. On December 8, 1987, Gorbachev comes to Washington to sign the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. But there are no concessions related to SDI, Reagan's strategy of peace through strength, has paid off. Two months later, Gorbachev invites Reagan to visit the Soviet Union. You had a scene that you never expected to see. Ronald Reagan in Red Square walking alongside his friend, the leader of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev. I can only tell you that we have both agreed that talking to each other instead of about each other is the way to keep out of trouble. The Soviet Union is still in power. Eastern Europe still suffers behind the Iron Curtain, and the Berlin Wall still stands. But Ronald Reagan has laid the groundwork for a global transformation. This is Gorbachev, uh, and this is the leader of Russia. And that is as far as we're going to get today. And we will pick up from here tomorrow. Beep, 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 beep.